Okay, welcome back. Hour number two, and we get to talk to Frosty Wooldridge this hour. Now, if you look in guests, look under Frosty's name, there are a couple of very interesting things to look at, and I, I hope you'll follow along. Uh, he sent me an article today, and he said that this author is so special and so extraordinary that whenever he writes something, he always reads it cover to cover, front to back. Is The guy's name is Leon Kalankiewicz. Am I, did I get that close, Frosty? That's correct, Jeff, yes. Kalankiewicz. Yeah, I've got a future here. All right. <laughs> uh, the article is called Pandemics and the Population, Lessons from the Coronavirus Catastrophe of 2020. Now, I honestly, when I was saying in November, December, that 2020 was going to be hell on wheels, it has been, and then some. And we're not nearly halfway through it yet. So this is a big deal. Uh, tell us about this gentleman, uh, Kalankiewicz, and, and why he's such an extraordinary writer. Uh, the article's are under Frosty's name. You can pull it up right now and start going through it if you want. We are going to go through it in some detail. Go ahead. Well, thank you, Jeff. And, and to each and every one of you listening across the globe this evening, obviously we're all in this together. I can't... Uh, uh, spell that out enough, and, and uh, also uh, uh, another column that was uh, uh, published on Rinse.com uh, by yours truly uh, uh, talks about uh, no less than a, a 10 foot and now 17 feet of social distancing, but also staying away from crowded situations uh, and and really treasuring your good health and and that of your families. And I also uh, talk in that that piece uh, just about what we can do individually uh, and, and the new normal in this country. Uh, Jeff and I have talked earlier today uh, some of the things that are going to continue, and, and there's no question in my mind that, that we're in a new normal at this point in time. Uh, and this article... I think uh, on several levels is very important because Jeff and I have been talking about it for almost 20 years now. And the article that you're going to read with Leon, uh, is a, he's a man who's traveled as much as I have. Wow, uh, and that's he, saying he, a lot. He, that's yeah. saying a lot. I mean, <laughs> that's saying a lot, lot. And his piece is called Pandemics and Population. Lessons from uh, the Coronavirus Catastrophe of 2020 by Leon Kalankiewicz. And he right now is uh, essentially uh, the chief um, scientific director at NumbersUSA.org uh, and has worked with Roy Beck. And of course, you all know Roy Beck. I'm sure most of you have watched the five-minute video, Immigration, Gumballs, and Poverty, uh, and also and off the charts, the 10-minute video that shows you the future of the United States if we continue on this massive, unending immigration, both legal and that's illegal, that is continuing to explode this country and also compact right. us uh, in, in our cities. And one of the things about Leon is he's seen what I've seen. He's, see, he's seen the wet markets there in uh, China. Uh, he's seen the filth. Uh, in all of Asia. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I can't begin to describe, but uh, many of you may have seen on Facebook uh, a four-minute video showing how in the wet markets, the Chinese and even the Indians, they they have dogs in cages. They boil them in fat. They they burn off their hair with blow torches and then literally throw I, them they, in vats. This is not, oil. no, no, no. This is, God, this is medieval uh, evil. It's weird. Oh, oh, oh yeah. It, this, this is, is not this is beyond, first world behavior. No. Yeah, this is yeah, this is this is dark ages. This is be, before dark ages. The cruelty of the Chinese for animals uh, and certainly in the Middle East also is a pre-dark ages. Uh there is no humanity here. It's just uh, they will eat and boil and cook and 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 shish kebab anything I, that's, somebody uh, sent me a, living. let me let me pop this in here somebody sent sure. me a video <clears throat> and i only could, i can only look at it for 20 seconds maybe and, and after the first 5 or 10 i could see some cook was getting ready to to, to put something yep. in a frying pan 
It was hot, full of grease. He right. put a live cat in there, right. hair oh, yeah. and all. A live right. cat. He whapped it on the head and put a live cat in a frying pan. He's, this is China, all right? This is communist China today. This is not first world, not second, third. It's fourth or fifth world, and it is dark ages, and it is medieval, it is gothic, and it is uh, one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. That's not to say that all Chinese are that way, but they've got wet markets in every major city and probably every minor city. This is what they do. Go on. That's what they do. And, and, and let me remind you that this is what I got to see back when I traveled through China. And it changed my worldview. Uh, and, and it's the reason I'm on, on this program with Jeff all these years later, because when you see the world with your eyes at, at first hand, and certainly at 12 miles an hour on a bicycle, you you get a touch of the world that most people don't. You, everybody says, oh, yeah, let's go to Beijing, and we'll look at Beijing and uh, Hangzhou and Kulin and, and Shanghai and all that stuff. But if you go through there like I went through there, I didn't stay at the at the uh, the Wall of China Hotel. Uh, I didn't stay at the fine. I stayed in little $10 a night uh, square rooms, six by six by eight. And, you know, that's what I did because that's the kind of money I had. But I also got a chance to get to the ground level. And Leon is the same way. And when you, you travel through these arenas, I mean, I traveled to Ecuador and uh, and certainly all of South America and saw the filth that's going on there. And it has to do with the illiteracy. It has to do with the illiteracy that creates the culture, that creates the filth. And that's why, I mean, like you look over in Asia, the average uh, age uh, of uh, life is around 49 years of age. It's because they have so many worms crawling in them. They have so many diseases that are exploding. Uh, the, the lack of sanitation is uh, just beyond comprehension. Uh, What's the average as, life expectancy, Frosty, in, in most of the world years. countries? 49, 49 that's years. It. Yeah, that's right. 49 years it's of age. For our, just for our audience here in the U.S. and, and Western mm-hmm. Europe, civilized parts of the world, the human body even under the best of circumstances, remains the potential host of over 130 different parasites. We're all vulnerable. We should all take parasite cleanses at least once a year. Go ahead. Yeah, and, I, and as a matter of fact, I do myself. Uh, and after all my travels around the, the third world over the last 45 years, uh, I've always come back and had a fecal check, a urine check, uh, and, a, and a blood check. Right. Uh, because you, you do not, you, you want to make sure that there's any chance for such things as Chagas or uh, malaria or Lyme's oh. disease. These are all parasites. We got nearly uh, a million cases of Chagas in this country now. Most of them are confined to the illegal uh, alien invaders who have come in here and brought it with them. But it is spreading, right. and that's that's a tragedy because that's a no treatment disease. That's a that's a slow that's burn right. to the next life is what it is. Well, that's exactly right. And for those of you who don't know about Chagas, just look it up. It's called the kissing uh, bug disease. Uh, Carlos Bastros, I think, wrote a book. Uh, You can look it up. But it affects around 16 to 18 million South Americans and kills 50,000 a year. And once you get the Chagas uh, parasite injected into you by the kissing bug, and I forget the official name of it, um, it goes into your body and then it starts to, atta- it just simply multiplies and attacks your heart, number one, and your organs. And in fact, I think it was Charles Darwin died of Chagas disease because he picked it up when he was Did in South he? America. I didn't uh, know that. Oh. Yep. That's what they, that they, they finally, that's what did him mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, he, uh, you know, got to live most of his life, but uh, that that last trip to South America and, and the Galapagos mm-hmm. Islands, and I, I've, I've gone everywhere he's gone. I've I'm always thankful that I was always alert and put I checked my body uh and and had a an outstanding tent uh, completely uh, enclosed to make sure I didn't get those diseases. Did you did you bicycle over to the Galapagos Islands frosty? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I spent I spent two of the 14 14 days in the Galapagos Islands. I went scuba diving. 
I got to see the blue-footed boobies, the mask boobies. I got to see the uh, the iguanas, the sea iguanas. I I got to see them diving under the water. Uh, wow. Oh, to see those uh, blue-footed boobies, uh, and, and then I got to see the blue-footed booby dance. I got to see the waved albatross jumping off the cliffs. I went through their nests. Uh, the frigate birds that are uh, you know they're just extraordinary. Oh, they're big, I, big birds. Oh yeah, they're huge. Uh, tremendous wingspan. And they fly around a couple thousand feet up in the sky. I got to have uh, the uh, tropical penguins. I had I had uh, big seals. Uh, the, the the big seals charged me. I, we had we were diving in their area, and one big bucks uh, of a seal came out and, and charged us and scared the living pants off me. Uh, but it, it was extraordinary to have the, the little. Uh, uh, tropical penguins uh, f- flying around at, at our feet and uh, so that that was was an extraordinary 14 days uh, you can see uh, I mean, like the, the Darwin's finches you can see how all of the uh-huh. I went through eight different islands and you can see uh-huh. where everything uh, evolved in its own way uh, to match the the islands themselves and the food and, and the colors their environment and you name it. sure they fit like yeah. a glove, oh, yeah. hand in a yeah. glove. This, this is exactly. this. Th- what I yeah. want to point out to our mm-hmm. listeners: what you yeah. just heard from Frosty, it just mm-hmm. he was, these things were just rolling off his tongue. Frosty mm-hmm. has seen and experienced more of the world, arguably, than maybe anybody else there is. I don't know who's. You can't see more of the world than what Frosty Woldridge has seen, bicycling it. Twelve what? Twelve miles an hour. Twelve miles an hour. I could write a book. <laughs> you have, but I mean, I this is you literally book. have you have seen this planet like few other humans ever have or ever will, and that's that's just incredible. You know, it has been. I'm 73 years old, and it has been a wonderful, marvelous, stupendous, amazing uh, adventure for the last uh, well, since was 50 years I've, since I've been out of college. And I'm thankful and I have great gratitude that I got to live yeah. through all of it. Uh, and, and it, But it's also, I didn't realize that it was preparing me for the last part of my life to bring the knowledge and bring the understandings of what the human race faces here in the 21st century. Uh, probably uh, along with somebody like Leon Kalankowitz, uh and Roy Beck uh, and, and, and certainly Jack, Dr. Jack Elpert, uh, who uh, you can go to skill.org and he is right on the same path of, and his, this guy's out of Stanford and he, he's got an Einstein brain. He's, he's brilliant. Uh, we've skied together and we've hiked together and we've biked together over the years. But uh, if you go to skill.org, he shows you the same things that I've been talking about on the videos. And, and, and that's, that to me is the key here. We need to pay attention to uh, the Jack Alperts out there and the Roy Becks out there and the Leon Klankowitz is out there and the Fred Elbells uh, and certainly, uh, oh, the Jenny Goldies uh, and the Madeline uh, Welds, uh, the women that are out there also speaking the same things that I'm speaking about uh, because these are the canaries, if you will. These are the journalistic scientific canaries telling us that this mine is getting overloaded and we're all going to pay some very big consequences. Yeah. And so in this piece, I would really highly recommend you all reading this piece because you need to know what is coming. And he, he, he ties these, uh, these points in. So it's not just me speaking once again, but he says... Although immigration policies in every country have always been partly about keeping out dangerous diseases, immigration plays only a small role in pandemics like the one that is beginning to paralyze the United States. Yet there are serious overlapping forces behind pandemics and mass immigration, Uh, he, he says. The current pandemic is perhaps the inevitable outcome of an unprepared, globalized, borderless, overpopulated world. And the importance of borders is clear. In addition to all the obvious medical measures, more than ever, the world needs borders, population stabilization, and more ethical approaches to our non-human neighbors, in other words, the animals, on this ever smaller planet. Unquote. Drink, drink that yeah, in. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because 
Uh, again, you, I'll, I'll, I'll ever smaller, for you. ever more diseased planet. Well, yes, and also as, as as I've talked about in the past, the catastrophic climate destabilization that's going on, that is killing off uh, again a uh, hundred species a day, and he goes uh, he talks about that, and then I talk, I've talked about it in my forthcoming book, uh, you know, America's Overpopulation Predicament: Blindsiding Future Generations, which will be out sometime in October. We are disrupting the very balancing systems that allow this planet to be balanced and to have species balance and to have everything and everyone thriving. You know, I'll give you an example tonight. Uh, I think there was uh, 30 people, I think 30, there was all these tornadoes across the midsection here of the United States from Oklahoma right through into Tennessee. And I'm not sure, but was there something like 10 or 30 deaths? I'm not, I'm not sure, but I know a lot of deaths have occurred. And, and you right. see all of these people and all of these houses are smashed, and, this, and entire cities are just obliterated by these, these very hot tornadoes going on. Well, if there weren't so many people in those arenas and in those areas, you wouldn't have all this death and destruction. And so that's why... When you, you hear and you understand or you read from these very valid individuals who've already experienced this stuff, we have to ask ourselves, why are we on course and why are we allowing our country to add another 110 million immigrants into this country legally? And what are going to be the consequences? What are the ramifications? What are the ramifications as to the environment, uh, as to the catastrophic climate destabilization, uh, as to ecological footprint? And I think you all have heard me talk about ecological footprint and the damage it does, but also you, you're, talking about, uh, you're talking about water footprint. Uh, you're, you're talking about energy footprint. You're talking about contamination footprint. You're talking about exhaust footprint. Uh, and I, I talk about these in my book. Uh, and, and so that's what we're facing. And either we do something about it, each one of us, in our own cities, in our own families, in our own in, in, in our own uh, right in your own backyard. Your own backyard. We need to have, again... We need a national, we need a state by state, we need a national discussion debate on what kind of a civilization we're going to hand over to our children. And thus far, that's not going on because everything is hell-bent for exponential growth. If you, I, I just, uh, the, the editor, uh, uh, Patricia Calhoun of Westford Magazine here in Denver, Colorado, yeah. is uh, considering publishing a piece I talked about uh, for Colorado implementing a population stabilization policy. And there are several other writers like yours truly here in Colorado who are asking the same thing because I can tell you this, Colorado is turning into a, 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 is a gridlock nightmare and an air pollution nightmare. Denver, Colorado is not a fun place to live because every breath you take is filled with a hundred different toxin exhausts. And, oh, yeah. and as you, you can see Denver every day with this massive brown cloud that it's so toxic and everybody's breathing it and all that, that, god-awful toxin is going into their brains, it's going into the brains of their children, and the chemicals that all go with that. And you have to wonder, why are we doing this to ourselves? And, and Denver's traffic is, is as bad or, or worse than L.A., and L.A. is the worst in the world. Well, L.A. is one of the worst, 10 top worst gridlock cities in the world. Uh, and I, how do I know? Because I've traveled through all the top 20, 30 worst biggest cities in the world. Mm -hmm. And why aren't we forcing a discussion? Why aren't we, the citizens, you and me, every one of you listening today, what can you do to push a massive national, statewide and uh, discussion on what kind of a civilization we want to to, to build and to grow? Do we want a thriving, sustainable, balanced, homeostasis country called the United States of America? Or do we, do we want another uh, India or Bangladesh or Mexico 
Anybody want to move to with, Mexico uh, and with, live there? With even more of an intensive caste system than we oh, have now. My. And that's coming. That's coming. Oh, yeah. It, re- it truly is. <laughs> You know, and I and I and I I hear I've gone to a couple of websites. One of them is called Mind to Do, and it's it's a it's an all black Facebook page, and mm-hmm. all you see on that page is all of these you know African Americans just complaining of how bad it is over here, and 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 how much the racism is just put them down and everything else, and you know, but none of them are migrating back to Africa. Funniest thing, isn't it? Isn't it the funniest Gosh. irony that all they do is complain Gosh. and they've had this bad thing and that bad thing and everything else? They're all victims. But you don't They're see all, them look, going back to Africa where where they could be in no. the majority and there would be no racism. To call them and, hypocrites and it, would be too kind, Frosty. It, it would they're, be. They're dirtbag, slime, opportunists. They know exactly what they're doing. They're professional victims, and it's all a scam. And they should be picked up carted away and flown home and dropped off, either at the airport or above the airport. I really don't care. Yeah, well, and I would like to see Maxine Waters be the lead on, on, the, on the plane going back so she could finally become a happy person along These with These people are Hudson picked up... John Lewis uh, and so forth. Uh, yes, John Lewis, yes. These people oh. are picked up on the streets. And if... I, I don't like to overstate these things. They're picked up with the clothes on their backs. We saw that courtesy of the video of the whistleblower who was working with the U.N. Refugee Resettlement Program in Missouri. She told the whole story. It's all lies. They're picking these people up and dumping them off here as part of the international globalist effort to destroy what's left of America. That's what's happening. We'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, here we are. And let me get this set. There we go. Okay. Frosty and I are talking about a lot of really important things. What what happens to most Americans is that they unfortunately seem to think it's a reflex that the rest of the world is kind of just like us in many ways. It's not. We have the high, had the highest standard of living in the world. As a, as a large nation state, we had cultural values, we had great art, great music, and then came big time sports. All right, whatever. We had all the things that a society and a culture would want. And I'm talking about the 1950s. We had a choice to make. Which way were we going to go? Were we going to continue to maintain our control through our constitution of our way of life? or at least try to increase it? Or were we going to sit back and be intoxicated and inebriated with the hedonistic lifestyle that big business, Madison Avenue, and greed was proffering to us 24-7 on the mass media? And unfortunately, we were drugged into a stupor and took door number two. And it took us slowly but inexorably down into the garbage of first and a half world status and now second world status. And if you go into our big cities, L.A., San Francisco, for example, you will see third world status and below. Third world cities don't even feature people defecating and urinating in the streets. That's how bad it's gotten here. So was it stolen from us or we... Did we allow it to be taken from us? Unfortunately, we allowed it. By our silence, we allow. Never forget that. Frosty, go ahead. Well, and there's no question uh, that we, ha- we have allowed it. Uh, the 1965 Immigration Reform Act, uh, I will uh, literally call uh, Senator Teddy Kennedy, uh, the father of the destruction of America. Pierre Trudeau could be called the father of the destruction of Canada. Uh, and th- those two individuals really have destroyed North America uh, with this unlimited call for multiculturalism and diversity. But one of the things that's beyond that, that everybody's going to pay a severe and dear price, is the fact that we're being compacted like sardines, I mean, back when we were only 194 million when I was a, a 10, 15 year old kid, uh, man, the highways were free and clear. Uh, right. the, the cities oh, yeah. were 
just just wonderful. Uh, you could go to the national parks and you could have an experience in Yosemite that was just wilderness, like John Muir. Today, go to go to any national park of, of any merit, uh, the top ten national parks. You can't park. You you Glacier National. I was there last summer. It, it is a nightmare. I mean, it's a living, breathing nightmare. There are people crawling all over Glacier National Park at the top of Logan Pass. Uh, the parking lot is literally crammed, jammed, and shoved up. You've got air pollution everywhere. You can't get a campground. Uh, you, you can't get a motel. You can't get anything. And the prices are sky high. Why? Because literally the Chinese have taken over the national parks. That's all you hear is Chinese. And then there's a few of us speak English, and we're Americans at some point. You will not be able to go to the national parks. You'll have to draw a lottery ticket, and you might get in, and you might not. But one of the things that we're all facing, and and I'm going to quote uh, Leon here, and he said, if they could speak, what would the viruses of the world call millions of weakened, malnourished people living in overpopulated uh, conditions? Mm-hmm. And the answer is a feast. Yeah. The more sure you right. compact human beings mm-hmm. and the more you multiculturalize and diversify uh, cultures that are uh, like China's culture or India's culture or even even just the same thing down in Mexico where where there is no sanitation, where there is mm-hmm. little sanitation, where there is a lack of, again, did I not say this previously? 66% of India, with 1.3 billion people, they don't have access to a toilet. <laughs> In Africa, 66%. The estimates are somewhere so that's, around 90%. That's, six, that's 650 million, 700 million people in India. In Africa, it's 90% of 1.1 billion. So let's call it a billion right. people, basically have no access to toilets. This is... Right. <laughs> all right. All right. I, I know point, I bring you all taken. this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, this is sobering reality. And yeah. yet we are importing these people into the United States at 100,000 legally every month. And that... Now, that, keep in mind... About, hold on. Hold, yeah. Frosty, Frosty mm-hmm. this yeah. is Donald J. Trump. This is legal immigration that right. he promised was going to be stopped for six months. He didn't stop it for six seconds. Go ahead. Sorry. That, that's correct. And neither has uh, the entire Congress. I mean, none no. of our, no. except for Tom Cotton of Arkansas, a couple, I think it was two years ago, uh, promoted a bill to cut all legal immigration in half to somewhere around 500000 a year, which is still going to drive us mm-hmm. to uh, well over 100 million more people into this country mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of birth rates uh, and the chain migration. And, of course, that all got trounced. And, and what's really disgusting is that the corporate heads, the big money people in New York who run the stock market, uh, they're the ones that are pushing for more immigration. They're the ones that are doing mm-hmm. everything they can to continue, again, this Faustian bargain. That's to literally force the luxury of the moment, make and spend and produce and create wealth so that the Faustian bargain doesn't care about the future. It has no ethics, no morality, uh, and it, all it does is care about who can drive their Learjet right now to the detriment of our environment, our quality of life, and our standard of living in just uh, the next two or three decades. And that's what's, what owns all of those elected officials, such as a Nancy Pelosi or a Charles Schumer or the late John McCain, or I, I can just go right on down the list. There are very few integrable uh, senators uh, in Congress, and certainly a very few, uh, they're all in a minority. I guarantee you this, because the majority of the U.S. Congress, that's the senators, 535 congressmen and, and uh, House members and senators, uh-huh. they are pushing this. They are not doing anything yeah. to stop it. And, and so as we get compacted, the predictable ca- catastrophes are going to multiply, as Leon talks about, 
uh, in his, his his piece here, and, and th- then we all get to be victims because we sat by and let this happen, and and that to me is the travesty against our own children that we watched it happen. We said nothing, we did nothing, and we still have done nothing. And again, I am not sure. In fact, I have no optimism that our borders will be shut down uh, in the next year, oh, five no, years, hey, or ten never, years. Never, Frosty, not going to happen. Yeah. They'll stay yeah. just like they are. We're being pushed headlong into very harsh socialism here. Socialism is NAFTA. Uh, what's the new name of it? Uh, I can't remember now. So, can you Anyway... It's the new, it's the new version of NAFTA. It's got I think it's Mexico. The TTP. Was that was it no, the no, TTP? No, 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 no. It's it's it's. Uh, and I, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember it. Anyway, it was just signed into law by uh, the Orange Man a few months ago. It's NAFTA. Okay. It's it's an enhanced NAFTA is what it it's is. A, it's a repeat. So is all it is. We yeah, we're we're in trouble. There's not going to be a border wall. There never was going to be a border wall. It was all a lie. It was a con job. He hasn't built. Uh, a month and a half ago, he hadn't built one foot of new border wall. All he had done was somehow authorize, with his supposedly taking money from the Pentagon and the military, the rehabilitation of existing border fences, which were falling apart. Now, the new ones that had been built in the place of the old ones that were falling apart, in the same place, they're not new fencing, the replacement fence, and you've seen them. They're the very tall steel slats. Absolutely. Well, the Mexicans came up with portable, like a chainsaw, a grinding wheel on it, and they cut right through the steel. And they could even right. drive cars through there. You know this. You brought it up. I uh, saw it. Uh, but our people don't. I saw don't, it last summer when yeah. I, biked, uh, I biked from San Diego. And, and, <laughs> and, and the other thing that's ironic about that whole wall is the fact that there has been no... Uh, enforcement internally against the big uh, employers of illegal aliens, such as Marriott Hotels, Ch- Chipotle's, yep. Mexican yep, yep, Grill, yep. Uh, La Quinta, you know, the Tyson Chicken, Hormel Foods, all of these big, big, big corporations who buy off the, the uh, Senate and the House members, I mean, they bribe them. That's the reason why there's no enforcement, again, of U.S. Code 8, Section 1324. If they would simply uh, enforce that law that's on the books, has been for over 30 years, I guarantee you, nobody would hire an illegal alien and nobody would be coming over here because there aren't any jobs and you wouldn't have any way to support yourself. And they certainly should stop educating all these illegals kids and stop the food uh, EBT cards and certainly the, the breakfast and, and lunches for all of these kids because it's killing the American taxpayer. I, to this day, do not understand how those, those, those literally unethical members of Congress can continue to do this, and they get away with it. That's that is the stunning aspect. Oh, no accountability. No, come on. That's just criminality. I, criminals don't I, have to pay. Criminals aren't caught in government. When you're a professional politician, you're a professional criminal in ninety percent of the cases. Nancy Pelosi is also a professional traitor to the uh, formerly United States of America. They're pushing right now in Congress under the uh, the terrible noise and stress and chaos of this coronavirus thing, Nancy, uh, that little g- greasy Nancy, is pushing, uh, let me find the number, HR, what is it? Uh, it's the most draconian, outrageous, unconstitutional gun control law ever to come out of the House or to try to come out of the House. And it may get out. With her pushing it, it'll probably get out. Uh, this is outrageous. We have a constitution. It's H.R. 5717. That's it. Pelosi's trying to sneak H.R. 5717. It's the most aggressive unconstitutional gun control bill I've ever seen. Right through the House under this, this terrible stress and strain and angst of this, this pandemic. Uh, so these people are not only criminals, but they're traitors to America. That's the problem. They're communists. They're certainly working against us, and they're working against the U.S. Oh. Constitution. 
Now, one other thing I want to bring up that Leon brought up, and, 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 and each person listening to this broadcast, understand this, because this way in the end will affect you. Uh, this led to a certain complacency on the part of society when all scientists knew that, number one, nature abhors a vacuum. Number two, nature is dynamic, not static or stagnant. And number three, organisms evolved. The moment we began throwing antibiotics at microbial bugs was the very moment they began to evolve resistance to them. Feeding antibiotics to increase the growth and profitability of livestock destined for our dinner tables was not an optimal long-term strategy to manage and integrate food reproduction and public health. Then third, zoonotic diseases, those caused by viruses, bacteria, and parasites that can spread from non-human animals or wildlife to human beings are a major threat to homo sapiens. Some 75% of emerging infectious diseases we face are believed to come from animals. These include the coronavirus at the center of the current uh, pandemic. As you can see, Leon knows what he's talking about, and here is what we're facing. Why do you think Chinese are, again, as I've said, streaming into British Columbia as fast as they can chain migrate uh, and literally leave their own country? Because China, with 1.4 billion uh, people, is a sardine can of, of just desperate people crushed, crammed, and jammed into that, that literally small place called China. And now it's exploding. Uh, the Chinese are exploding into Europe, into Canada, certainly into the United States of America. Oh. South and America, Africa. Oh, in Africa, they oh, built Africa, those entire ghost cities, huge oh, ghost it's, cities it's, in Africa. Yeah, it's extraordinary. And so what I'm saying is if we don't stop this kind of migration into our own country, if we sit by and ignore it. Right. Which we, we are. are. We are. And, and we're we not are. holding I mean, Trump accountable. We're not demanding we're not, we're not that the guy Congress be. He should have been removed. He should have been impeached for lying. About the border issue. What did he do about the border issue? You know what he did? Mm -hmm. Put Jerry Kushner in charge of it. And he put Jerry Kushner on his new coronavirus task force number two, along with the princess. He also put Jerry in charge of Middle East peace. He also put Jerry in charge of negotiations and tariff issues with China. God knows what else he's put Jerry in charge of. We're being run by President Kushner here. Believe it. Well, there's no question whatever and whomever is at the the center of this. Again, I my my expertise is in the compaction of humans, which then detrimentally affects the natural world. I'm just going to give another example here out of Leon's piece. At the yeah. same time, humans have spread diseases to remaining wildlife populations around the the world, including the fungus that causes the white nose syndrome, which has wiped out tens of millions of bats in eastern North America. And the disease right. that they catch right. is something like senotridomyosis, the, uh, white the lethal nose fungus causing a precipitous worldwide decline in amphibian populations. So what he's showing here is, is that we were, th we're th <laughs> if you're, if you're riding your bicycle, uh, and you're probably going 10, 12, 15 miles an hour, and somebody throws a wrench into your rear sprocket, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to tear off your derailleur, it's going to bust your chain, and it's going to break uh, all of your spokes, and you're going to crash. That's what's happening to nature. And the more we continue to literally outstrip nature's ability to maintain a mm -hmm. balance... That is a consequence that's going to grow. And as I've said, uh, we lose 100 species a day worldwide because of overpopulation of human beings. And that's called the sixth extinction session. And that's verified by the, look it up, Oxford University, the Norman Myers, M-Y-E-R-S, 40 years study on the uh -huh. sixth extinction session. How many listening to this broadcast tonight 
think we're going to survive as we destroy the very foundation of the animal world, the web of life that nurtures us, that sustains us. And if you think it's so great, uh, according to the the Interior Department here in the United States, I think the latest uh, extinction rates for North America, or at least the 48 states, is around 250 creatures per year because of habitat destruction and contamination by chemicals, uh, and that 2,500 creatures every 10 years. Uh, You know, dear uh, fellow Americans, Canadians, and world uh, citizens, we, at some point, being at the top of that particular uh, uh, very unstable natural world uh, situation, we're going to crash. And and that's what he talks about in this column. Again, uh, go to rinse.com read this column to give yourself an understanding of why we have to absolutely stop all immigration in the United States and why we have to have a national conversation more more than just on rinse we have to have a national conversation on every major TV show 60 yeah. minutes ought to have me oh. on their show next week <laughs> to bring these facts Certainly, uh, even CNN with, with uh, you know, Anderson Cooper, certainly with Fox News, with either Jesse, I don't care, any and all they these top people. They won't touch Frosty. Frosty well, I know is that. literally being quarantined from any major exposure and has been. Yeah. He's, he's too hot to handle. It's too truth. Too much truth. They don't want it. Yeah, I, and unfortunately, I can bring the truth. And I'm, no. you know, I think it w- was it uh, a few good men when uh, Jack Nicholson said uh, to uh, Tom Cruise, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> well, there's no question. At some point in time, whether it's 60 Minutes or NBC or ABC or NPR, the truth is going to slap them upside the head. Whether it's 10 years from now or 20 years from now, the truth is going to nail them and their children up against the fence of reality. And all of us in this country are going to pay one hell of a nasty consequence of having added another 110 million immigrants to this country. And then, of course, uh, the consequences Again, and I've said this before, I know all of you have watched Thelma and Louise, and remember they blew up a tanker and they they, they did so many bad things uh, uh, on their way, uh, that 96 uh, a T-Bird uh, convertible, that they drove that car toward the, the cliff, and, and the cops were on them, and as they got there, they stopped for a second and said, oh, we don't want to go to prison, uh, the consequences are too great, so they floored it. And they drove uh, that, you know, 66 T-Bird over a cliff. Mm -hmm. Jeff, we're doing the same thing. Uh, I swear to God, we are just like the Titanic headed toward the population iceberg. The consequences are going to continue to grow. They're going to become more, uh, literally more critical within our society. Whether you look at the sociological impact. Of, of, of putting these incompatible uh, cultures and, and certainly these, this one incompatible religion that's now starting to take hold in so many of our cities. I would invite anyone to go to Minneapolis, Minnesota and go look at and just travel through Somaliland. Don't do it at night. You might be okay during the day, but Somaliland with 125 Somalians with an average IQ of 68 is not really a good plan for your health to mingle uh, with that particular crowd or no. in South Chicago. No, 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 no. no. So no. anyway, and also when you, when you read this thing, uh, there's pictures right here, the wet market uh, of, of these bats. They put them on shish kebabs. They cook them, and then they eat them. Uh, no. When you see this, you just can't believe it. And yet that is what we're facing, and that's what we're turning our country into. I don't know if you know it or not, but we have a lot of people that came out of Asia that still, instead of having the dishes up in the, in the cabinets over the stove and in the kitchen, they put chicken coops up there. Chicken coops. Because cultures don't change. They just simply yeah. bring what they bring. 
uh, right. into the into a first world country. They bring their third and fourth world cultures and they practice them. And then we are all paying the consequences of all of that, Jeff. And then some. Oh, and then some, and it's, and the then some is going to be more than then some in the, in the coming uh, months and, and absolutely. years. Absolutely, yeah, no. yeah. Frosty, thank I hope you. This has been Salute. very informative. It has. You've been great as always. Say hi to Sandy and be well. I will do that. Good night. Good night, Good night Joe. Thanks. Frosty Wildridge, and oh, he should have been on 60 Minutes 20 years ago. And Tucker won't even answer him. Can't. They're told not to. All right, back in a flash, hang on.